Jealous Guy by John Lennon. It's one of those special songs that can make you feel the warmth of love and cry for melancholy at the same time. So how did John Lennon achieve this? And how is it that this song has such an incredible impact? In the late 1960s, during the Beatles' spiritual awakening in India, John Lennon found inspiration for a song that would become part of many people's lives. Let's dive into some music theory behind Jealous Guy. Let's start with the easy and most noticeable stuff. Of course, John Lennon's voice and lyrics are the most important. That goes without saying. But there's one chord that always gives me the shivers when I hear it. It just completely flips the mood. It sticks out and it's placed perfectly. The chord that I'm talking about is the E minor 6 that follows the E minor chord. But what does it do and why is it there in the first place? To answer that question we need to take a closer look at the verse chord progression and especially this part. You can see that John Lennon stays on the D and E chords for two bars each. Now staying on one chord for two bars without changing anything might be boring. That's why both times the second chord changes. A tone is added that creates tension and makes them sound dissonant. The D turns into a D7. This is now a dominant 7 chord. In tonal music, it wants to resolve to the chord a perfect fifth below, which is the G. But instead we slide up to the E minor chord. This is called a deceptive cadence. You create expectation, but then you fool the listener by doing something else. The E minor chord turns into an E minor 6 chord. And this added C sharp gives all the flavor and dissonance. When we look at the tones that are in E minor 6, we can see that they are the same as a C sharp half diminished chord, only it's in the first inversion. This diminished chord creates tension and it wants to resolve to the chord half a step up, which is the D major. So not only do these chords sound great, they also add richness to the song's harmonic structure. Paul McCartney and John Lennon both composed songs inspired by Mahesh Yogi's lecture on our connection to Mother Nature. And even though at the time it did not make it on a Beatles record, they did jam it during the Get Back Let It Be recording sessions. But then it was referred to as On the Road to Marrakesh. Child of Nature, as the song was originally called, had a beautiful melody that would later turn into Jealous Guy. The verse is in the key of G major. Except for the E minor 6 chord, all chords fit the harmonies of G major. John Lennon circles around the dominant harmony, which is the D and D7. Eventually, at the end of the verse, we go back to the G major chord via a plagal cadence from the C major chord. This is a softer and weaker cadence than going from D to G. During the chorus John Lennon changes the sound. The first two rounds use harmonies from G mixolydian. This is essentially a more powerful sounding version of the G major scale. The difference is that the G major scale has a major seventh, which is F sharp and the G mixolydian scale has a minor 7th, which is F natural. But in the second round there is one chord that does not belong. The B flat chord is not part of the G mixolydian harmony. And this has something to do with the melody. After the Beatles breakup, the final version of Jealous Guy started to take shape. But Yoko Ono urged John to write about something more sensitive. So he poured all his insecurities into the new lyrics. His possessive feelings towards his love 
became the new theme of the song. So how did this B flat chord get there? As we know, the first two rounds use harmonies from G mixolydian. Well, the basic melody notes that sound on the B flat chord are D, E and F. And the most important ones are D and F. When we look at all the harmonies in G mixolydian, we see that we have three chord options. The G major, the B diminished and the D minor. This is what they sound like and decide for yourself if they're any good. None of these harmonies really fit. But when you play the original B flat, the melody has this beautiful uplifting character and it sounds super strong. You can see this B flat major chord as being a borrowed chord from G Dorian or as a chromatic median chord. But the most important thing is that the main melody notes, D and F, are also part of the B-flat major chord. That's why it sounds so good. Of course, John is not the only one responsible for making this song sound as great as it does. For example, when you listen to the recording, what's the first thing that you hear? That's right, the beautiful piano playing of Nicky Hopkins. And what about Klaus Forman's bass or Jim Keltner's gentle drumming? And don't forget about that added beautiful strings arrangement. There are plenty of great songwriting techniques that we can learn from Jealous Guy. And now that I analyzed it, I appreciate it even more. And if you feel the same, then share this video and give it a like. The full song analysis is available via my Buy Me A Coffee page and then you can also join my online music sessions. So be sure to check it out. Stay creative and for now, see you next time.